Hold the camera. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yeah. How's it going up there on the way? You guys good? Yeah, we're gonna fucking door dash right now. Walk up, it's gonna be a little. Kinda kept going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 didn't even phase him. Oh, you know, who ordered the tax? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, it's Sean Shank from the Sean Shank Redemption Podcast. Thanks uh, for joining us for part two of our uh, journey to the but. Bahamas. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a shout out, first of all, to Black Label Chronometers. Black Label Chronometers, they make amazing custom clocks out of vintage records. Anything that you want, they'll be able to put on a, a clock and, uh, and make it for you. So check them out. If you use the code SHANK15, that's S-H-A-N-K-1-5, you'll get a discount. Uh, also, check out myvive.com. That's M-Y-V-Y-V.com. You pick me up in the middle of the day, caffeine's not doing it. Check out myvibe.com. It's uh, different flavors of smelling salts. Give you the pick me up that you need about that two o'clock drop. Hit them up again. It's myvibe, myvyv.com. And if you use that same code, Shank15, S H A N K 15, you'll get a discount. All right, now that that stuff is out of the way, um, I want to introduce uh, again Davin Rosenblatt. Uh, he's here for the first episode, the headliner here at uh, Joker's Wild this week. But I am very excited to introduce Val. I'm Val. Now, um, I am, as you guys have guessed, I am completely a fish out of water down here in the Bahamas. I'm a country kid from Deer Creek, Indiana. So I'm going to ask Val a lot of stupid questions about the Bahamas. And, 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 and uh, Davin's probably going to roast me the entire time. That's fine. I, I don't have to be here. I mean, she's fully capable of roasting. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what's cool. Val has has been uh, a, a kind of a tertiary MC for us uh, at Joker's Wild this week, and uh, improv artist, actress, uh, comedian. But you've only been a comedian for how long? For I want to say four months, but it could be three. But I'm just gonna say four months. I'm gonna say four months. That seems about right. So, all right. So first of all, like, what got you into to stand up? Because um, I mean, being out of the country, I don't understand the Bahamas. You know, there's only one comedy club on the island. Yes, there's only one comedy club. So I feel like just the the industry in general, as far as like entertainment, cons uh, it's just how can I explain it? It's almost non-existent, and so it's only the small grouping of people in the orange economy or in entertainment that kind of creates different platforms for it. So you'll find like small comedians doing comedy shows just once a year, trying to like just make some money, just a, a show that's happening. But yeah, there aren't a lot of stand-up comedians and I got into it by accident. So I originally wanted to do some improv nights at Joker's Wild. And I was just talking with the management there, and then they came up to me and asked me, you know, would you like to try hosting? And I had no idea what even hosting a stand-up would be like. Maybe I still don't know. Maybe I'm failing at my job. Who knows? But, no. but so yeah, it was kind of something that just happened. I wanted to study. Can I put my can I put my yeah, up? Put your feet up on top. Okay, I'm going to put my feet up. Relax. So I wanted to study comedy in Toronto. And it was going to be a diploma in comedy two years. And it didn't happen because I ran out of money in Vancouver. So I had to come back. And so it's like, I'm still kind you of... You ran like, out of money in the... That's okay. not near Toronto. Why didn't you start with Toronto? Because I went to Vancouver first. Ah! <laughs> so like many comedians, not so good with money. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to Vancouver first. I studied acting. Then I was like, I'm going to move to Toronto and study comedy. Never happened. But I'm um, here now, so... It yeah. All right, so you're well traveled. You've been to Canada. Um, have you been to the States too? Or? Yeah, I've been to New Orleans, Florida. That's what I say, Florida. Uh, where have I been? New York, Georgia. New Orleans is not a state. New Orleans no, it's a city. <laughs> well, Louisiana. It's, it's, a, it's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. Cali. Okay. Um, Cozumel, not in the States, but. 
the place I've been. So traveled enough. Want to travel more, but okay. enough. So, all right. This is. What would you say? And feel free mm -hmm. to say whatever you wish. Okay. okay. Like, however you want to say it, uh, that's fine. But between like folks in the states versus folks in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. what would you say the difference between like the the people? Oh, yes. it's a big difference. <laughs> it's a big difference. I mean, not that I hate you two, but well, thank wow. you. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> and bye. <laughs> That's that's a victory. All but right. It, it, My it, name's Sean Shank. <laughs> yeah, well she knows that she knows that we got she got we got Keisha's ear. So she's not gonna tell us. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, so yeah, no, we're no, not really getting honesty right here. No, I I want to hear your exact opinion. Because look, before we get into guys, Val is one, super nice, been incredibly welcoming, is a fantastic MSC, has you know, amazing stage presence, super friendly. Every time she's been on the stage, the crowds absolutely love her. So the shit she's about to say next. Don't hold it against you because apparently we're about to get uh, scorched earth. But no, no, I want to hear. I, 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 I know. I, I just feel like that there is a, a a big difference. I feel like maybe because we're a bit smaller, culture-wise, there might be a difference. I feel like behemoths are very much more talkative and more friendly. Mm -hmm. than, really? And yeah, we we just like to talk because we. You had some unfriendly behemoths. Talk your truth. Go no. <laughs> <laughs> um, not some are like that. Okay. I find them, the behaviors to be, in some ways, mm -hmm. even more closed off. You find that? Some. Oh. No, you talk. I want to hear you do this. That, man. What did you do? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Oh, no, no. That is my favorite high five. That's what my did favorite you do? question. <laughs> So I he's, feel like, he's experienced the same thing and with the you, same people. Have you, well, now it sounds specific, like, has it happened mainly in Atlantis? Yeah. No, because the people down at the, we need to get chicken patties, by the way. I want to do that before we go. Okay. But <laughs> at that shop, no, we, we came in and the chicken patty shop, and there was a dust up going on where they're just like, Yelling back and forth. As soon as we come in, they're like, "Hey, how's it going?" No, 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 no. They didn't sound like they didn't even pay attention to us. <laughs> the lady with the patties was nice. If I start goofing on them, when I say, and you said they're all nice, yeah. because Sean thought every, Sean when we got there, he's like, "Oh, everybody in the Bahamas is so nice. They have been so nice." And I'm me. like, okay, "But it had been mostly the lens." I'm like, "Dude, they have to be nice. They're, yeah. the, they're paid. They're paid to be nice. Yeah, they that's, are. that's their job. It's hospitality." I, you know, being from the Midwest and middle of cornfields, I try to think the best of people. I really do. But no, you don't. I, don't lie to that cat. I hang out with my friend from New York and no. I realize humanity is broken. No, you hate children. Oh, you you, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I'm not going to have you lie to this. I'm not going to sit here next to you and have you lie to these people with your fine sponsors trying to create this image. You are a way worse person than I am. Shake I, 15. I, Shake 15. Shake 15. Look, I have a sticker on my luggage that says I'm a horrible person. Uh, then tell them that. <laughs> don't say you're a good person and I try to believe the best you don't. Courtesy of Brian Atkinson, thank you. Um, you're a good person compared to what? The worst people? Absolutely. I am a good person in general and I don't hate kids. You've seen me, I've seen kids in the Atlantis and I've smiled at him, except for that psycho that was on the elevator with us. Little kid was losing his shit. You've made, com you've made comments that you are not fond of children. I, I am not. I like children. I'm not fond of fond of the side effects. I say the that on stage. Side stretch marks. They are. They are. A <laughs> <laughs> loss of sleep. Loss of money. <laughs> loss of joy. Loss of ability to travel. Loss of brain function. Loss of happiness. I mean, it, you I just describe comedy except for the loss of travel. That's true. Yeah. yeah so, I don't, so it's comedy. I hate. <laughs> It's just life, baby. <laughs> Get around. Well, uh, real truth, though, I used to love people before we started doing comedy. And Val's going to see that. You'll see that the more when you do this. You start to hate people? It's, it's not hate. Hate's an incredibly strong word. I mean, if we're, look, I parse. I, <laughs> I don't parse words because I, I am an English professor and like, words matter. And hate, when you talk about like legitimate diet in the world, hate, that's a whole different like yeah. level of focus on a human being. I don't care enough to hate them. Yeah, that's but, the other thing too. But you see how rude people are. Okay. So that, that, that's what you see when you do this, whether you're on stage or off stage. Yeah. You just see, even if it's not directed at me per se, you just see how it's directed, and has been directed to me, how it's directed to other people. 
to peers. Like they have no filter, they don't take into uh, consideration how, even saying you and I are standing next to each other and uh, they go, oh, I liked you so much better than the other comic. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's a common thing in this thing, which is great for your ego, but it's like, right here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, and that's a mild example. Yeah, and people don't, the, the thing that's messed up about that is people don't understand, like, as comics, we have off days. Like, I can't imagine you going into your factory job or working at the supermarket. I, I grew up in factories, so okay. I, I can rip on it. Okay. Um, and have had the, I did, I, grew, I started packing parts in factories when I was eight years old, you know, so. Um, did you start in the 1920s? <laughs> <laughs> no, I no. I, my grandfather owned a tool and die shop, Flightway Engineering, and I started packing parts for him. And I was driving forklifts by ten. I was running a shipping department by the time I was twelve. Seems like they were really safe and buttoned up. No, well, no, I was, dude. I'm a good worker. You were ten driving a forklift. Yes, <laughs> I was. And if I didn't drive it correctly, I would get beat. So I was all you're doing, doing is reinforcing my image of your grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're doing. No, they're great. Now, eight was working the factory. I was if not, they beat the crap out of you. Salt of the earth, people. <laughs> Real patriots. So this is why I think people from the Bahamas are really nice, because that's my thing I, I objectively balance. See, now we've, now we've discovered something there. Now, we, that is fair. Considering, yeah. considering you were raised by wolves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no, because most of the people I, most, okay, most mm -hmm. of the people I've met have been like you. Okay. And you are fantastic. I, Thank you. I, I am amazing. You are. And humble. I'm humble. Oh. I'm very humble. Yeah, I pride myself in my humility. See, she's got, Val's got like that Carl in him. You know, very, yes. very, very positive. Carlin's one of the bartenders. We grew up in church together. Did you really? <laughs> he's, he's solid. But, but, I, but I don't think that's a lot of the energy here. I just think that's particular to Val and Carlin. I don't have the same impression you have. Well, it's, but uh, my impression is your also, first time as well? My first time. During your, during your first visit, did you get that impression? First visit? Because you've been here seven times, right? Seven, eight, I, don't, I don't know. It's been seven a is a number of completions, so maybe they're like completely done with being nice to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Here comes that fuck again. <laughs> no, because I, I, I know the personalities that play. Okay. I know, well, I'm, like, I, I have a different relationship mm -hmm. with some of the folks than um, you would the first couple of times through here, because I've been seeing them over the course of seven, eight, ten years okay. and, and, and everything. I know exactly who I'm dealing with. I know who to, who this is just the way they are and they don't mean anything mm -hmm. by it, which I think is the majority of the people that are not bubbly like you. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a personal animus. This is just how they are, they are on yeah. the clock. Now, I have not hung out with some of them off the clock, so mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't really know. But then there's people like you and there's people like Carl and who are, even when you're on the clock, clock you're there's a energy and infectiousness that's what gets you through your comedy set is your and no it is Thank you. it, it is. is you have good energy you have positive vibes are very welcoming that that's you know and then the material will develop through time but that's why you're having good reaction with everybody I, I have a question though because now this is starting to make a little bit more sense because of what I've experienced down here already is is there this kind of demarcation line between us and then everybody else perceived as tourists? Because typically when I first start talking to everybody, there's just kind of this glazed over like, hey, blah, 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 you know, where it's just, that is their job. But then like when I start asking for guava duff, you know, I would see folks light up like, you know about guava duff? It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, and, and so then it's like all of a sudden there's a conversation. So yeah. you're just some other, I feel like showing like, interest. Have you yeah, like have you ever seen the videos where it would be a a white guy in China and he would be speaking English and then he would just like break off into Mandarin and then everybody's like oh you know Mandarin I'll I'll care for you more yeah. I feel like because too you're working in so tourism is our number one industry so we know that we have to be nice and we have to be smile because we need the job we need to keep the industry going but then it's also like a bit of a burnout. But also, not everybody is supposed to be in the jobs that they're in. Like, I, I feel like if you're like front facing and like customer service is where you're supposed to be, but you're like a bit of a sourpuss. Yeah, then you shouldn't be there. Sure. But your daddy might be the manager, so you got this job. So I feel like that comes with just meeting people in general. I feel like when you go into the city a little bit more, where it's like I just enjoy. I sell this coconut on the side of the road because I just enjoy selling this coconut. 
I feel like you get more of the true Bahamian essence. And I feel like because it's very like mechanical, hi, good day, hi, good day, when there is somebody who shows interest or seems a little bit more down to earth or might not be a Karen, then you just are a bit welcoming to like See, I've, I've had good experiences because I've, I've hung out in the local pubs for mm -hmm. years with the Bahamians who are just living their best life. Yeah, I, I've, had, I've had good, ex I've had good yeah. experiences. Yeah. But I, but I just look at it. I look at it probably differently. I go, and I said to them, I go, people are just people. People are just people. you know, no matter where you go, you're going to have the friendly people, and you're mm -hmm. going to have the closed off people, and the people having a bad day. So I don't. No, you're right. You're right. I don't look at it necessarily. I haven't noticed a big cultural thing between Bahamians mm -hmm. and Americans where I can go, oh yeah, Bahamians act this way, and Americans act that way. Maybe America, maybe. Experience Americans being entitled. Yeah, that's. But I wouldn't experience. I wouldn't have that experience. Which... I would also say, like, um, I remember when I went to Canada and there was like a car broken down on the side of the road, and I didn't stop. I agreed, but I was in an Uber, so it was like it was difficult. For me. Yeah, <laughs> Uber. You've got to be here. You want to get five stars, buddy? You're gonna stop right now. Yeah, stop. Get the meter ready. It's an Uber. The meter counter. Run. Anyway. But like in the Bahamas, if we were to see somebody like broken down on the side of the road, even if we don't know them, we would shut out. Not everybody, but if I'm stuck on the side of the road, I'll guarantee at least two strangers would stop to say if I'm okay. So yeah. I feel like there's a little bit more of a brother's keeper type of culture, but I guess maybe we have to identify you as a brother. Well, no, I mean, I see people in the States on the side of the road when somebody's pulled over and out. Well, I, I will tell you, in my experience, because I did, I grew up impoverished, like rural country, lived in a trailer, you know, on the farm, that whole thing. And to what you're talking about, if you see somebody on the side of the road, you help them. Like you stop, you help, you know. But as I've gotten older and been around the cities and things, I'll, I'll see people, you know, I've seen people passed out on the street and people will just step over them, mm -hmm. you know, because they just get so jaded to it. And yes, that's a good word because you see when you see something every day, it's no longer right. out of the order. It desensitizes. Yes. yes. There you go. Yeah. Do you think it could also be like country versus city life? Like it's, if it is a bit more rural or it's different. I mean, culturally, it's different. You can say people are people, but I mean, I I've noticed a marked difference, man. You know, it's I, people in the city they move faster, they talk faster. Oh, that yes, that. Yeah. But I but I see that in the United States as well. You know, growing up in New York, New Jersey, we're pretty much as fast as it gets. Yes. And I travel when I, you know, I travel all over the country, and I see it too. So again, it's not a Bahamas United States thing; it's just a regional thing. But yes, the Bahamas is a, is a slower pace. Yeah, sure. I don't which, is, which is nice. Um, That's like a radio, like security's radio. The Death Star is about to explode. That's how I want to say. They've ordered us off. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the library. Get them out. They're learning our Bahamian secrets. <laughs> um, so, well, it's, I don't know, you, like, when uh, we were in the supermarket, you know, the other day, because we, we walk over the bridge and we go up to, what's it called? Super Value. Super Value. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's funny because, like, the people are very helpful there. Like everybody's been nice and helpful, but it's almost just like with the stamps that you get at the end of the when you purchase all your food and stuff mm -hmm. and you get the stamps on the card or whatever it is. I, I, I give my stamps to the guy like a toddler like use my stamps and he just you have to hear <laughs> <laughs> like you taped them on a thing for me. See, and but it, that's not your fault because they used to give out cards and they yeah. don't give out cards anymore. So he should not be expressing anything <laughs> like that to you. He should express it to his manager, whoever decided to get rid of the cards. I mean, just I just felt like at the end he just wanted to pat me on the head like, there you go, buddy. But see, that goes to my point. People are people. He didn't have to be that way. If the, if the Bahamians overall were generally nicer, you wouldn't have had that experience. Just a guy doing his job, just like you would experience in the States. Oh, yeah. another one? You know, uh, well, but, but I feel bad though because something I've seen down here that is is, is frustrated me because I'm I'm an empath and I, I sense energy, emotions, and shit like that. And I've noticed with and I'm just gonna say this: some of the American ladies and some, I've seen the Italian ladies do it and things. They are in. Incredibly contentious down here, and just it, you said the entitlement thing, and I, you said Karens, and I kind of feel that it seems like you get a lot of Karens down here, and I don't know if it's a financial thing or you know, like we have money, you do it, but it's just like I 
I don't know. Yeah. Well, I want that to answer, then I'm going to give you a bye. Please. Um, I feel, again, it might be just privilege is, a, is an interesting word, especially like in the Bahamas where it is predominantly black and where we don't have a lot of. Our, our, the biggest interaction that a lot of behemoths have are, are when working with tourists. So sometimes you do get, I used to work at Atlantis, so I'm just standing at the camera. I used to work at Atlantis and I used to work in the <laughs> Really? Atlantis is right there, yeah. right behind that and I'm wall. Happy. But I've had some parents who had, like they were staying in the Michael Jackson suite and they were beautiful, they were wonderful, mm -hmm. but I had some people where it's like, you asked me for a discount to be here, and you're still being incredibly rude to me. So, like, I don't even know if it's privilege based on finances. I don't know if it is people just being people. Um, and so I feel like, I don't know, maybe that also has, how do I put it? Like, we just don't know what to expect by each tourist that interacts with us. And I guess sometimes you might have an expectation, too, if I see the beach wrap or your hair a certain way that I might see it and I don't know if wherever they're coming from they are coming from places where they look at help in a different way in general because technically I'm help I can smile with you and I can be friendly and I could have a conversation but I'm still the help is this part of the help moment. program right now yes. this podcast? This is, this is it. we should get the cup later <laughs> <laughs> Sean 15 Sorry. that's right check 15 check check 15 so <laughs> But yeah, so I, it's difficult to really say what it is because again, people are people. Like I, I agree with that fully. But so it's difficult to like stamp one thing on behavior or interaction. And I feel like it might be worldwide. Like I feel like the, whoever is being rude here will probably do wherever they go because that's, that's who they are. I'll give you the example. So um, I think I've been pretty nice to everybody, right? Absolutely. But you've also saw me at um, when we went to Anthony's the other day, mm -hmm. and we're standing so that, you, you know Anthony. I was there last night. Okay, I'm sorry. I paid $25 for calamari and fries. Was it good? I was upset. Okay. So, sorry. They, so <laughs> we want to get something to go. Mm -hmm. So they have um, a woman who will see you, the hostess, mm -hmm. and then they have like another podium, and then they have managers, and mm -hmm. they have waitresses. So we just want to order some food. I, I grab the menu, know what we want. Oh, well, well, the, well the guy is, is, is somewhere else right now to mm -hmm. do that. So we're waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm like, well, why can't you just take an order and bring it to the kitchen? Yeah. And like, and then the guy who's supposed to take the order, he's going outside with something with a cab. I go, well, that doesn't seem like that's taking. A, a, yeah. So that's where I get frustrated. It's like, and I would do that in the states too. It's like this is not working. Yeah. Well, you need to be more efficient with this. Why do I have to wait ten minutes for you to get somebody to place where I don't mind waiting for the food? Mm -hmm. But why, when you have all these, the process. yeah, why yes. when there's all these other people around here, we have one guy and he's not stationed at the podium right now. Well, and there's also I've seen signs around uh, the different places. That basically, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it's like chill the fuck out. You're on island. That was at Anthony's too. Yeah, and but and I and I see that and do. Do folks come down here? I don't come care from where, and they're just like, I need this now, dude. I want it, but not in like. To his credit, I'm the same way. Get the order in, and if I have to wait for 30 minutes or whatever, I, I'll chill out. I'll look around. I'll talk. Mm -hmm. I'll have fun. Um, that's not. That's not my issue. Um, so I get what he's saying there, but is it just like everything's very chill down here? I mean, what what is what what does that come from? See, I wouldn't even consider that experience island time. Like, island time is more like, we call it bohemian time as well. So, like, if we're going to an event, an event starts at 7 o'clock, or we want the event to start at 7 o'clock, then we'll put 6.30 on the flyer or 6 o'clock on the flyer because we know people are going to be, like, just coming in their own time. Island time is also, like, if we're just, like, drinking, we don't care. Like, okay, yeah, I could go to bed now, but nothing else to do like it's like vacation vibes I feel like that it's just like bad customer service <laughs> and so okay. like it doesn't have to do with the slowness of it the, the slowness probably comes from their management team but not like island time like because I also make an uproar if I have experienced bad customer service I've, I've been told I've been told that people like when it, it sounds offensive but like when my white lady comes on 
because I will very much like. <laughs> my white face. Excuse me, I'm putting on my white face. <laughs> I need to speak to the manager, right? Now, and that's what I did at Anthony's last night. Like, I spoke to the manager and I was like, hey, he gave us some free island, um, Long Island iced teas. It was cool afterwards. My wife, uh, my wife pulls that same voice because her mother's um, an audiologist, mm -hmm. so she called that do Dr. Margulies. The Dr. Margulies voice. When, okay. I, when, I, when I like the same things, like, oh, okay, now we're on. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Val has a name tag. She flips it over, yeah. and it says Karen. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know. Because bad, bad customer service. Oh, you get that. And I feel like sometimes, as a Bahamian. I get treated because even when the manager came in, because I asked to speak to the manager, he went straight to the white couple that was there, and I had to like, uh, uh, uh it's me, it's me that wants to speak to you. He didn't even expect the behavior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but see, he just stereotyped the white people <laughs> as complainers. Yeah. Right. But no. But he was also he came in like very quickly to fix their issue, even though I was sitting here, like he kind of like, and I'm like, no, it's it's me. I need you to to care for me. So I do feel like sometimes with the Hamians. Sometimes they, we even get like the sour treatment over tourists actually. Very like if I'm walking downtown, if I don't have on a backpack, then they don't think I'm from Atlanta and they won't like talk to me in a certain way. But again, if I do come in and I speak with a dialect, then I'll get like the Bahamian discount or an extra shot. So it, it honestly, I don't know, it just, it depends. Grace and Empress were talking about skin color. Yes. Which is, which I've heard from black people before. Like, like colorism? I guess that like the darker you are, the mm -hmm. more disrespect you suffer. Mm -hmm. and we were somewhere the other night, and they did not get service that they should have. And we were talking to them about it, and they both said they immediately were just like, "Well, it's." The, and she like grabbed her arm, and I was like, "Really?" <laughs> but then I remember, and I was telling them about it when I was in uh, Def Jam. Um, the comics were telling me. And, this is where I discovered, like, even within the black community, the colorism. Yeah. You know, like, the darker you are, they'll call you midnight and all these things. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned what the term high yellow meant. Yeah. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought that was like a, a Japanese guy in a train. That would be high yellow. <laughs> oh, wow. See, you take the racism, and then sure, this is, I see your racism. And you know, racism. I, mean, I, raise you. <laughs> I will raise you. But, like, in the Bahamas, we also have Kanki Joe is. So like if you were Bahamians, because there are Bahamians that look like you. Yeah, there's white Bahamians. Yeah. My buddy who used to work here is a, is a white Bahamian. And we would call him a conky Joe. A what now? A conky Joe. Conky Joe? Conky Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please explain. Well, I'm guessing like a honky, but a conky. Because <laughs> it's the Bahamas. That's, that's what I'm guessing. When I realized conky was an actual <laughs> Seriously, term, so I, think, I think that's like, because that's an Ooh. old term. So I think okay. it originated maybe from honky. Right. Nice. But you're the Bahamas. It's honky. But also and it's also a white. The lip of the conk is pink. Like if you look at the the conk, oh, the flare, the it is, is like. Yes. I want a shirt that says Conky Joe. No, you don't. You don't. No, you don't. You don't wear it back home, not here. Okay. Because <laughs> they'll be like, "What's that mean?" Oh, it means they really like me. <laughs> they gifted me with this. It must mean something. Got my work its way to my answer. Conky Joe. That's a conky okay. Joe. So yeah, I gotta ask. Am I, I a Conky Joe? No. No. I'm well, sorry. no. Well, no. <laughs> All right, so not played by the right element here. <laughs> Can you tell our listening audience a dirty Bahamian word? A dirty Bahamian word. Um, <laughs> Do the bodyguard just come and just like really? <laughs> I got a bodyguard off to the side. He got an emotion out of it. So what you? He's like Conky Joe, please. <laughs> <laughs> So no, Val has a bodyguard. He he is the size of, of three Earths <laughs> and as quiet as a church mouse. So he is a lovely human though. Yeah. Just just very bodyguard. good good at his job. Yeah. But we just cracked him. So <laughs> <laughs> I um, smiled, now I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> no one was to see. He'll be anytime like you guys see a joke and you hear like a bait, huh? It's him. Sorry. That's his outburst of joy and laughter. Got a little back in. Yeah. Can um, anybody see? <laughs> but um, so there's Nanny. So Nanny, do you know what Nanny is? Well, I know what Nanny is back home. Yeah. So a Nanny back home is like a babysitter, a caretaker. Right. So nanny is poop. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. Like if you have Nanny, then yeah, oh. you got a poop. 
Uh, Bongi? Where's the nanny? Oh, nanny's with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> kids are playing with nanny. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Oh my god. Jesus. Yeah. So there's nanny, there's Bongi. Bongi? Bongi is your butt. So, so like, nanny comes out my Bongi. Yeah. Nanny come out my bongi. Nanny come out my bongi. Isn't it happy? <laughs> Everything like if you put it to behavior music, it's, it's all happy. Nice. <laughs> um, what else did I think about? Shit. So there's sweetheart. So if you have a sweetheart, that's like your side chick. And then if a man is cheating on his wife, then we'll say he's sweethearted. Okay. Sweetheart. So yeah, so you're the sweetheart. So it's not like oh, it's my sweetheart. Like that's a bad thing if you say somebody's your sweetheart. Um, what else? What else can I think of? Um, Oh, Bubby. Bubby is like. Uh, that's a, that's, well, I don't is, think it means grandmother. No, like your Bubby is. Your boobs? Boobs. Okay. Uh, yeah, could you explain <laughs> it again now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could stand up and jump up and down as you explain what he's doing. Bubby, Bubby. There's Bubby, then so there's Bubby. Bibby. And Bibby is like the thing in the corner of your eye. That's Bibby. If it's drizzling, we say it's sprying. Sprying? Yeah. I think it's like spray. Like, but, right, know, right, yeah. So like spray. Um, I can't think of a lot of bad words. Yeah, those um, aren't bad words. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. I love it. The bungie nanny, sweetheart. Krabby. Oh. Uh oh, big man, big man's He's, He's like, like, I got some words. No, he said Krabby. Krabby? Yeah. Krabby or Krabby? Krabby. C R A B B Y. What's Krabby? What's Krabby? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense because that's how you would get them. <laughs> that makes sense. I am fucking lost. Of course oh. you are. <laughs> Queens. Oh, crabby. So crabby. Like, yeah. Crabby. For those who are well, watching and can't I, hear. I sometimes <laughs> have to look, there are people as dense yeah. as me out there. Crabby is the Not vagina. Sure like that. Crabby is the vagina, but grinding is the act of coitus. Oh. So, so you put your doggy in a crabby and then you all grind it. <laughs> so you think your doggy smells like a fish? <laughs> Yeah, this Thank is you. literally going to probably be my highest rated episode. I can't wait to send this link to my mom and be like, Mom, look what I did. I did. I will. I will send you the link. I explain like, crabby to the polite boys. <laughs> <laughs> to the <laughs> conky chills. <laughs> to the conky chills. Yeah. Now they know they're seeing our secrets. We're gonna, I'm going to go to bed in my home in a couple weeks, and all of a sudden, security guy's going to be like, You can't know. Yeah. You can't know what the boogie. You can't know what the boogie crabby the only crab we're talking some real nanny here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this, like this is this has not been a we got what's it? nanny. This has yeah. not been a nanny of, a, of, a, of an episode. Okay, so I, I'm kind of like vapor lock because there's so many questions I want to ask you, and we've got probably about 15 minutes here. Um, so when you're working with uh, North American comics. Mm -hmm. What is your impression? Of it or is it just vary from comic to comic to comic that you've seen here? I mean, mm -hmm. and you don't have to, you know, like. Obviously, uh, we're your favorites. Oh well, yeah, 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 of course. We're three. Funny, it's best looking. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We know. Because I was actually oh, spilling yeah. nanny. <laughs> yes. But um, I, it, there's a difference. I feel like there is a difference um, when I. So there was an Indian comedian that came. It was very interesting. Like Indian my people or Indian... Do uh, it again? Indian my people, like Feather, Native American. I'm, uh -huh. I'm Native American a little, a little bit. Okay, but there's I'm also not that from India, Indian. India, Indian. Dunkin' Donuts. Accent and all. <laughs> do a lot of Indians work at Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> they own it. They own it. Not yeah. just work, they buy them all. Yeah, they, they buy the franchises. Dunkin' Donuts, gas stations. This Ramada is... It, yes. Casinos? No, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's native. That's native. Okay, yeah. okay. See, I'm just, I don't know a lot of stuff. I mean, that's I do, true. I do. I just cross them around. You see, this is, this is why this is great, because you're learning stuff. I'm learning a whole bunch of nanny. <laughs> oh, so what was, what was the Indian comic yeah, yeah, yeah. compared to the, uh... um, he, he spent a lot of his set reminding us that he was Indian. And it's like, we know, we get it. So like, it was milking on what could have been like a, fun punch line every now and then, like the king has set. And then I've seen some African Americans. I don't know, maybe, like you talk about your Def Jam, Def Jam experience and I found it funny because like I could relate to it a little bit more or relate to like the African American. I don't want to say the, yeah, maybe the African American experience a little bit more, but I've also found Caucasian. 
people in Cougar. I put like you Caucasian comedians, white. white like, Conky Joe. Conky Joe, white is actually a step back. Yeah, so Conky Joe, I'm going to call you Conky Joe. Then I also entertain it. So it's like, to me, it just also depends on the comic. But I feel like North American comedy, I can't even compare it a lot to Bahamian comedy because we joke about what's true to us so like what sure like would we understand your experience is where comedy comes from and i feel like that also was like the biggest challenge knowing that i'm gonna be doing comedy for a mainly american <laughs> crowd it's like what i would joke about over the bridge you wouldn't get it here like sometimes if well, there the, are the art the art in that mm -hmm. is being able to translate your experience mm -hmm. in a concise and funny way mm -hmm. so that they can understand that and you're getting three minutes in you'll get there if you want it yeah. Where you'll be able to talk, uh, and and they'll love it about what your life is like living over the bridge because they have no idea. Most of them don't yeah. go over the bridge; they don't. Yeah. And, and it'll work great for you, I think. But go on. Okay, and I, I appreciate that because that's something to think about. Because I always try to stare clear from it because I'm like I maybe don't know how to translate this or like put it this. It takes time. It takes so, time. It's hard. So okay, yes. so if if my conky Joe ass wanted mm -hmm. to make Bahamians laugh. Mm -hmm. What would subject matter, because you talk about the difference, and I, and I get it, you know, contextually, but what are some of the things you would talk about to make a Bahamian audience laugh versus uh, a bunch of uh, white, basically? Um, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's even like, I don't even know if I can even say anything in particular because I everybody's sense of... You have an yeah. experience with that? I have several experiences. Okay, so I don't know that. I have, and this, it's a very limited experience. So obviously we've had um, Bahamians come to our shows. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I've, I've been successful with them doing whatever the hell I did. Yeah. But then one year, uh, Naughty, who's the house comic here at, at the Atlantis, he had me open for him at a big corporate Christmas party. And it was mm -hmm. several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I really struggled. So I don't know if I was just an off night, or it was just me, or it was just them, but I was, the stuff that I normally do on that night mm -hmm. was not connecting. So it could be just as far as, well, this is a corporate event and this is a comedy club, but Naughty connected with them. Sure. Because he had that local flavor, yeah. which I, I don't have. I mean, so I think when they come here, they expect to hear the white tourist experience of what it is, but if you go over the bridge, they expect to hear what their life is about, their yeah. experience. And then, because even like certain references, like we don't. I, I think I think you said a GED, like a GED. Not does, Sean. Uh, okay. That's me. So like a GED doesn't exist in the Bahamas. So unless I know about it, I wouldn't like get it. But I know what a GED. But see, is. now that's one. Of the, that's a good pickup. But that's one of the things that you're going to have to figure out mm -hmm. when you want to bring your experience mm -hmm. to, the, to the folks here at the Atlanta. Same type of thing. You're going to have to figure out how. What's the What's the equivalent? Yeah. That's what Sean would have to do if he was going over the bridge mm -hmm. to perform. Well, it's not just that. I didn't, you know what, you guys bring up a good point, because I generally when I drop the GED thing, and it's it's derivative, other comics have done it. I'm not going to try to claim, like, oh, I'm brilliant with that. But I've noticed, because we've had Bulgarians and French people and... Mm -hmm. People from Cameroon. Can, yeah, Cameroon. Yeah, Cameroon. That's not a challenge. They, they were so <laughs> awesome. They get, well, he was in Cameroon, she wasn't. Yeah, Evan, right? Evan, Eba, Eba, Eba. He was awesome. And, and you know what? I was so happy because now I've hugged somebody from Cameroon. I've hugged Bahamian people. I love love. It's, it's great. <laughs> I love um, love. Just not kids. Sorry. Kids are, kids are terrible. I'll say it. Anyway. Um, but, kids are made from love stupid. <laughs> no, they're made from... And a doggy. They meet. They meet. And <laughs> they grind. And they grind. Crap. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And then they're born, and Sean goes, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> like That's it. right. That's right. You do, so they come out, you <laughs> um, But it's, it now occurs to me that the, the mix is so... That's why it's not hitting as much. Because it's, it's, I'm delivering it the same as I always do. But when you're doing so much of the Midwest and things like that, I mean... See, that's a very specific thing, GED. So, like, if we're yeah. talking politics, they all know Donald Trump yeah. and Joe Biden. Right. But if you're talking GED, that's something very specific about a very specific thing. Yeah, it is. About a, it's not even just an education. It's a specific part of education. Right. So, like, if I'm playing an international audience, 
I sometimes I won't say college, I'll say university, because yeah. that's the word they associate with yeah. the that's right. that's right. And even because Naughty told me one time, I at one point I did have a, an actual like 10 to 15 minute set, and just as I continued to to work, like I've been stripping away, adding some things, sometimes I don't even do the set, but I made like a reference to, oh, what's the word I said? Uh, hoopla. Hoopla, and, yeah. So, but he said like some some Americans wouldn't know like what a hoopla table is. Well, okay, what's a hoopla table? Oh, <laughs> we know a hoopla. Is. Yeah, hoopla in the state. It's like a party. Yeah, it's like woo woo hoopla. hoopla. A whole lot of hoopla. Hold on a minute. Look at him. Look at the job. He looks like I just stole his baby. You <laughs> <laughs> always made your kid like away all the secrets. That's like a SpongeBob thing. I thought it was joking. A whole lot of hoopla. Yeah, like a, yeah, like a, well, no, uh, the the word was around before she went to She's young. Very true. So a hoopla table is like you have like three rings and there's like a table full of prizes, like at the carnival or the fair. Okay. We consider carnival, you all like. No, that that fair. word is universal. Carnival, you can get yeah, yeah. But but it's like you throw the rings from ring like chalks. a table. Yeah, and you get a prize if your ring goes on the prize, you get it. So that, so that would be similar to ring toss. So ring it's toss. not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So you would say hoopla, or as you might be familiar with, ring toss. You give him that, and then he can go on to your yeah. job. Okay. You just have to, you have to make allowances. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's knowing that there is a difference. Because I'm like, everybody plays hoopla. No. No. <laughs> everybody well, we, play we play hoopla back in the States, but it's usually at a carnival people called carnies mm -hmm. that are generally toothless, hooked on meth, and uh, the, the prizes are rarely won. But mm -hmm. it sounds much more wholesome down here. But <laughs> you bring up carnival, and we've got about seven minutes left, and I want, please tell us what the hell is junk -a Tell us, I know. Tell you. you tell them. Junk tell them. It's amazing. junk -a is a festival, it's a parade, where we go in the streets, not loosely, but there are teams. So <laughs> we walk the streets. Yeah. It's a parade of hookers. <laughs> Just handing out the right, like this string. Yeah. Yeah. Handing out the grinding. <laughs> the grinding and the, that time of the year. And not the comfy. What's the other? What's the vagina? Crabby. Crabby. <laughs> but so it's like this big, large festival, a parade style. Everybody's like adorning festive costumes. Color is very bright and colorful. It's, it's a very colorful, uh, originally it wasn't that, like originally they use like um, news, is it newspaper? Like originally it looks like dark and kind of spookish because it did come from slavery and like being able to have your Sundays or have those moments of celebration. So it wasn't as extreme. Um, but now it's it's actually a competition as well. So they're like a bunch of different junk in the groups. Group A and Group B, so it depends on like how much fans you have, how much people. But there's like a lot of instruments. We shake our bells, like the bells are on top. Yeah. But we shake them. Scantily clad people. The bells, bells, bells just on the movies. Well, carnival is like more scanty. So John Canoe, like most, they they tend to have like costumes that they pace. So pace. I see a lot of flesh in both the men and the women when they're doing the John Canoe. Have you seen Junkanoo Carnival? Well, no, I don't have anything to compare it to. Okay. I've only seen Junkanoo around this time of year. December. Yeah, so sometimes you'll see some belly out. You'll see some bogey whining. Whining is like moving it. You can't see me. I'm moving my body in a circular motion. Undulating. <laughs> Good word. Thank you. Full body twerk. Yeah. <laughs> Full body twerk. <laughs> so there's a lot of like dancing, a lot of music, a lot of just celebration on culture. And yeah, it's just. It's a great experience. It's awesome. Yeah. And you are a Junkanoo performer? No. I'm not. I consider myself one. Like in my spirit, I rush. We call it Russian when you're <laughs> doing it in the streets, but nice. oh gosh, I'm doing it in the streets, but we know you're not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, okay, yeah. we got a couple minutes left. So, I, so you mentioned Spun SpongeBob earlier. Mm -hmm. So I guess my final question for you is. When you first saw SpongeBob and they said Krabby Patty, did that oh. laugh? <laughs> I got him. Yeah. But think about it. You eat Krabby Patties down in Bikini Bottom. Oh. oh. Shut up. God dang it. Go. See, now that's a joke that you could actually explain. Yes. That you could explain that and then 
do it. You could do that. Something you should work on. Okay. That, I'm actually, write that, down. that would translate. So, because everybody in the states knows SpongeBob. No, oh, absolutely. Even the children that come to the show. So, well, Sponge it'd be nice that you ruin their youth. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine has been because I was just like, God, there's nothing sacred, you know, Little Mermaid with a penis Listen, castle. I just, I just always aim for Patrick Starfish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's well, where the nanny comes from. <laughs> the nanny does come from the chocolate starfish. I didn't say chocolate; I said Patrick. You said chocolate. You said chocolate. Like, well, I'm a Limp Bizkit fan, so there you go. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you know what? They had a lot of quality work. Okay. They had no quality. They had quality work. You this can't is a whole be other a, episode. You cannot be a worldwide phenomena <laughs> like that without having really some, yes Macarena. <laughs> A sustainable <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> They're not sustainable. They had a couple moments. They had it out. They had, dude. Oh my God. They had. You know what? Look. Push down and turn. The hot dog bar, chocolate starfish. They had the gold cobra. I mean, they sold millions of records around the yeah, world. Yeah, you know, people like trash. That's cool. That's <laughs> fine. You're just. You know what? From your act, you're a hater. That's not from my act. I don't play a hater. <laughs> you say play a hater. You do the whole thing about. Oh, that's what diabetes. <laughs> what is going on? Question. Oh, really? If you need smelling salts, <laughs> shank 15. Shank 15. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Uh, thanks, Evan, for being on this. Cassie and Val, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been interesting. <laughs> wow. Dude, this is for a long experience, the Cocky Joes. Yes. She's going to have to take a silkwood shower. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks again, guys, for joining us. I hope this this episode was probably the most fun I've had uh, doing this. Uh, again, check out Black Label Chronometers. Uh, anything that you guys want on the clock, we'll put it on the clock for you. And check out myvive.com. M y v y v. dot com. Um, check out JG's Lounge uh, podcast. Actually, Davin's working with uh, Jukebox to get on that podcast. Uh, don't forget the code. Doesn't matter which one where you use it. Shank fifteen. S h a n k one five. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks, pal. Thanks, uh, thanks, Devin. And always remember. Guess what it comes down to is: get busy laughing, or get busy dying.